All right. Hey there, THP 494 and 598. Matthew here. So we left off and we had just finished kind of making some of these uh, funky kind of patterns here. And I said we were going to try one other thing before we left this too far behind. So let's go ahead and let's move our feedback out of the way. We're just going to pipe our render straight through for a second so that we're going to bypass our feedback. And what we're going to do is we'll head here into our GL. And we're going to add one um, operator here in between all of this business. Now, this is going to be a slightly slower process, right? This is like um, not for the faint GPU of heart. Um, because what we could do is we could insert a wire uh, surface operator here. And that's like way too much. Let's like turn that way down. There we go. 0 0.1, now we got this like more spaghetti-y kind of thing. Now we can see that we're just like churning at like 20 frames. That's okay. Uh, we're gonna make a few other changes here. Uh, for starters, I'm gonna go ahead and set this to 0 0.0054, right? So even smaller. The next thing we're gonna do is let's go ahead uh, and back out here for a second. We're gonna close one of these viewers. That's going to help get us a little bit back. In our geo, let's change our scaling to be 111. So we're not doing any kind of crazy scaling. We might close this guy. All right, we can see that's, you know, that's kind of playful. Let's move out here. We're still at like 19 frames. That's not ideal, right? That's certainly not what we want. Let's go ahead and let's, while we're at it, let's stop this round corners business. And let's uh, so remove some polygons. Okay. So that gets us back up to 38, 40. It gets us right in here to a solid 40 frames a second. Right, maybe not totally ideal, um, but a very, but for the effect that we're getting out of it, right, pretty fun, pretty playful. Uh, and we can still kind of continue to mess about with all of the same things we were doing before, right, in terms of our camera position and how we get close to this or look at this, right? This is interesting because of our, our lighting is really just like slam, bang, uh, totally left, right, uh, which is really fun. So one of the things that we might have feel like is a little bit of a hassle here is some of our camera control. So let's go ahead and um, change some of this. I'm actually going to add a null component. Now we've done a, we've used the null component like a little tiny bit, um, but we're going to go ahead and use this null component to kind of set up the scene a little bit better. So our camera, instead of looking at our geo, our camera is going to look at our null, and we can just drop it right in here. And the reason this becomes beneficial for us is now we can change where the camera is looking uh, without kind of futzing with some of these other things. So let's go ahead and reset some of the translate positions for our camera. So I'm going to move us to 0, 0, 5. Excellent. And I'm going to go ahead and just move us up slightly and to the right slightly and get us a little bit closer. And so far, this doesn't seem any different. Except when we come over here and grab our null, we can start to move our null left and right to control where our camera's looking. So this means that our camera, right, if we translate down a little bit, here we go, yeah. And we can move our look at position left or right. We can also come in and move our actual geometry around our scene and it doesn't change where we're looking. Whoops. Wrong. Aye, 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 aye. It doesn't necessarily change what's going on in terms of our camera. So this gives us the ability to uh, play a little bit more with a little more kind of control and finesse over what we're actually looking at, uh, which is wonderful, right? So that's jamming. I really like that. Now, if we pass our feedback back through here, we can see that, whoa, that still works, but it's like a little too intense. I'm actually going to go ahead and move into our geo here. I'm going to bypass our wire because I don't really, like, that is an awesome effect, but 
I'm going to skip it this time around. That's okay with me. Right, and let's come back to our geo and let's do our scaling again. I think we did two. I think that was one, two, two. Nope, that's not true. Two, one, two. There we go. Stretched a little bit longer. And in fact, we could probably make this more like three. Yeah. Right? So that gives us a lot of fun there. Okay, so we've made this thing already. Let's take advantage of the fact that this already exists. So we'll copy and paste. We can leave it being called Topography 2. Topography 2, excuse me. And we're going to come in here, and we're going to use the same thing, right? We've already done some of this work. That's really quite lovely. We're going to go ahead and head into our AV process. We're going to make sure this is working just the like we expected it to. Yep, we're looking good over here. Uh, let's go ahead and look inside of our geo. Our in here, right, got disconnected. Let's make sure that's still connected. Whew. Lovely. Now, we've set up a bunch of what we already want here. Um, let's go ahead and um, route past our feedback for just a second, because we don't necessarily want that this time around. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the way that we're thinking about how we're actually rendering some of this, right? So we've already done uh, a part of this. So let's hit, let head into our geo. And this time, instead of um, using a polygon, let's switch back to mesh. Okay, I'm liking that. In our chop two, let's make sure that we're computing our normals. So what we're going to do here to make sure this works, right, that's like a little bit fussy, is we're going to go ahead and switch this. We're going to leave it as a, a polygon. And instead of just doing columns, which we were doing, right, just looking like this, we could instead think about maybe doing some uh, quadrilaterals or alternating triangles, depending on the kind of look and feel that we want here. Now, if you've got the CPU headroom for it, you could also uh, think about doing this as a mesh instead, or even doing this as something like, oops, a NURBS, right? This is gonna be even softer. It's a little bit more expensive computationally, but um, it gives us a slightly kind of different feel in how the kind of like nature of this grid works out. And if we come out here, we can start to see what that's looking like. Ooh, that's looking juicy. I'm actually going to go ahead and just keep uh, kind of chugging, chugging right along with uh, polygons. And I'm going to leave it at quadrilaterals, I think. Yeah, that's pretty OK for what I'm feeling. Now, a part of what we've got here, right, is that we've got a, this kind of exciting kind of like peaks back here and then it trails off. Now, don't forget that a part of what we did means that we could come over here back to our AV process and let's actually get a floating copy of this up and running. Right, so something to kind of keep tucked away in the back of our heads is that the process that we're running with in terms of having converted this into a texture and then converting it back into channels means that what we do over here in this feedback network has an impact on in terms of what we actually end up with. So if we were to, for example, turn our opacity back to one, right now we hold all those values as we translate them. They don't fall away. They don't fade off in any way, right? We could also make sure they fade off faster. They've got a kind of more aggressive fall off. We can also come in here and if we feel like some of these things are just like feeling a little too sharp, we might uh, go ahead and make a little bit more room in here. Scoot this down. We could insert a blur and a blur is going to like soften up some of those edges, right? Now we've got this like kind of goopy kind of feeling. We could turn our filter size maybe down to like two. And we've got a much softer roll off in terms of what those peaks and valleys feel like. So there are a lot of options that we have here. Now, I think I want to change a little bit of what's going on with my lighting. This orange is like a little bit too, too orange. I maybe want like, mm, whoa, magenta, um, right? So I think I'm going to do something a little bit more like that to play with this time around.
Now you'll remember we still haven't applied any materials to this particular uh, grid, right? So we're just dealing with a plain old grid that we've got some lighting kind of effects happening on. Now, one of the things that I want to do here is I'm not going to think about this feedback. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. I am, however, going to insert uh, an operator that we haven't looked at before called an SSAO, right? So this is uh, Screen Space Ambient Occlusion. And this is going to help us kind of like, the effect of this is going to be so subtle, right? So, so subtle. That's okay. Um, because what I want is I want just a little bit of the shadow, bit, shadowy business, right? So we can bypass that and turn it on and off. And even these default settings, right? This even gives us a little bit of something um, that's nice. So we could come in here and we could turn this up a little bit, maybe, maybe 12 sample directions instead. Let's do 21 steps. I want surface avoid angle here to be more like 23.4. I would like my contrast to be more like 0, 1, 9, right? So I'm kind of like dialing this way down. We could keep this up really high depending on what we were up to, but I want this to be nice and soft. In fact, I might leave it more like 0.91. Yeah, we'll leave it right in there. Our attenuation, let's turn that down to maybe like 0 0.5 instead. There we go, and our edge threshold is 0, 1, 7. There we go. Now we can bypass this. We can see it before and after, right? This gives us just a little more sh uh, shading and kind of lets us see it. If we turn off this combined with color, we can see just the shading. And sometimes I like to work with this just to kind of like figure out what it is that I want exactly in terms of how it's going to behave. Okay. The last thing that I want us to play with here, um, which we haven't gotten to noodle around with too much yet, is what's going on with our camera. So our camera here is watching our null, right? And we can actually play this with this a little bit. We can see that as we move our null left and right, or as we move our camera, it's still looking at our null. And maybe what we want to do is we want to come more to the center position on our grid. Let's back up here. We'll move to the right just a little bit. And I want my null, right? I would love it to have just a little bit of movement in it. I want, don't want it to be totally predictable. So let's go ahead and add a noise top, or noise chop, excuse me. I'm gonna go ahead and give this two channels, right? I think I want a T, X and a Y. I want it to be time sliced. I'm going to add a null to the end of this because you guessed it, I'm probably going to want to um, remap this slightly. So looking at my null right now, okay, that's all right. Let's go ahead and grab these TX to TX. Oh, it's going to, for right now, it's going to be way too much. That's all right. We're going to take our noise and let's turn uh, the period on this way up, maybe like something like 10 seconds, maybe even longer, maybe like 15 seconds, right? And now we can see that it's got all that movement in there. That's, yeah, that's good. Let's go ahead and insert our math operator. And let's resample that so that our range of negative one to one instead only goes maybe like um, negative, 0.35 to 0.35, and let's include the zero in there so we can see it a little bit better. Right, so now we're gonna have this real subtle kind of drift inside of our null. It's kind of hard to see here. Let's go ahead and turn this period maybe back down to one. Okay, that's a little too fast. Let's turn it back up to 10. Okay. Now we can see that thing like wandering just a little bit and very gently. We could turn the math of this up a little bit. Oh, well, there's there's your problem right there. Zero, three, five. There we go. We might even make this more like 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. And now we've got like a little bit of movement happening in here. That's got that adds another dimension to us, right? 
We could also think about, well, do we want to animate the position of our lights or the color of our lights, right? Because we could certainly, if we go ahead and we take a look at our geometry viewer, our lighting here is uh, pretty fun, but we could do something like turn our cone angle down, maybe to 20 and 20, right? Narrow in that light. Let's turn our delta down maybe to like 1. Right, let's turn down our cone even more. Okay, so we're down to a cone angle of 10. That's excellent. Let's grab an LFO. So this rolling right, left, right, one, two, one, two, one, two. What if we were to take that and apply that instead to our translate, uh, maybe in our, well, we might want to do a few things to that first, right? We might want to bring that over here. We're probably going to want to apply some math in some way. And we need a null at the end of it. So let's start by grabbing this and just think in terms of how that affects our X translation, right? That's not exciting yet. That's okay. Let's go ahead and change the range of this, right? So our incoming negative one to one is going to correspond to, let's say, zero to eight, right? We can see it kind of zooming back and forth there. And maybe X isn't actually where we want this to land. What if instead we thought about putting this in Z? And our math now, instead of, let's do negative eight to eight. Great, we've got this great like back and forth kind of action happening. That's really fun. Uh, let's take this, let's turn the frequency of that down, maybe 0 0.1. Right now we've got this nice panning long kind of action that might even be still too fast, 0 0.05. Let's take our math, let's duplicate the math, let's add one more null. And then this math, let's actually say negative one to one is eight to negative eight. And let's use the second one on our other light. So now our lights move opposite from one another. Right, so this is another way that we can start to play with what's going on in terms of how we're composing our scene and the kind of play that we're having here. Now, remember that it's our null that's actually doing all that kind of like dancing and moving, right? If we were to move in here a little bit closer, we could even come over to our null and we could turn up its uniform scale to like five, so it's easier to see. So our camera is positioned up here, watching our null, but we can still move the position of the camera. So we might decide that we want this to come down slightly. We want to change the angle of this, right? Oh yeah, that's great. And we might even think about how we could animate some of our camera here, right? So we could think about controlling our camera so that it drifted further away or closer so that it was really in the middle of all of this, this is what's happening. We could do all sorts of interesting kinds of ideas in terms of continuing to manipulate and play with how it is that we're composing this scene and making it. I'm going to go ahead and close our window here. Excellent. This is starting to get a little messy. That's okay. Right, because what we might actually end up doing, if we were really being good, is we might keep all of these chops together. Now, all of these are animated pretty constantly, right? So let's think about what it would be to actually do this properly, right? So all of these are running all the time, which is uh, wonderful. That means that in the grand scheme of things, a part of what we don't need to necessarily worry about uh, is how we merge these together. and. Let me say a little bit more about what I mean like mean about that. Sometimes when we're uh, exporting or referencing, 
uh, we can end up forcing other things to cook when we don't necessarily want them to in terms of thinking about efficiency. Now, because all of these are cooking all the time and they're being used all the time, we're not going to be worried about um, creating references that might unnecessarily cause something to cook. So we could just go ahead and create a merge. We could tie all these channels together. We could connect this to just a single null. Excellent. And we can see here TX, TY, Chan 1, Chan 2, right? And we can probably be all right with uh, those names. Let's actually come into our LFO and let's change this to light 1, because that means we should have light 1, light 2. Good. That's going to break our references, but that's okay, right? Because we need to fix a few things. We're going to go ahead and let's get rid of those for one second, right? All of a sudden, we've caused all sorts of headaches. That's OK. Because what we're going to do is we're going to box select these guys. Let's collapse them down. Let's call this chop control. We'll drop that also over here in our network. And let's look at something we can do here. So we might play with this a number of different ways. Uh, one way would be to hook this up to an out instead of a null. An out and not an out. And if we do this, we can. Go ahead and nuke that guy. Let's position this somewhere a little bit more central to home. And we should see if we view our operator here that out shows up right here on this particular base, which means if we make it viewer active, for example, we can go ahead and grab something like light one and create a references this way. Oops. Let's make sure that took. Light 2 is a relative. Great. And then over here, we've got TX and TY. Wonderful. So now we've kind of gone ahead and tidied up a little bit of that shenanigan. We've got our null here that's uh, moving and grooving which is looking good. We've got something that's our AV process that all lives here tidily tucked away in its own base. We've got our controls that all live uh, tidy in a single base. And we've got our render network all up and running. So this is a kind of fun play and a fun example of some of the mischief we can get into as we start to convert some of our audio. If we back out here now, we should see that we've got all of these things. And they, here they all live. now. That's all well and wonderful, right? And uh, I like this a lot. I especially like how they all live here put together. And if I view one of them, I can get just one of them out here. That's great. So there's one other thing that we might think about in all of this. And let's look just here in our topography. And um, we can play with an operator that we haven't experimented with yet. And that is the select chop. And actually, I think we have our select comp. I think we have worked with this. So if we move out over here and we head over here to audio, we can actually grab this, drag it right under to our select, and we can choose a relative path. Let's just make sure that we have the right dimensions here. So this should be 150 by 47 as a size. And now this particular component, right, we've just selected that panel so it lives right in here with us. And the effect of that means that when we move out here and we take a look at this, if we were to view this, we now have our audio controls that live right here in this particular container. So rather than having to remake all of those control elements, we already have them done. And in fact, when we move out here, it shows up in here as well. So we could think about uh, grabbing the same select chop, comp, my goodness, select comp. Let's go ahead and just copy it. And let's go through and add it to our other networks. And now we'll see that we also have our audio control in each one of these. And depending on the thing that you built, this might be really handy, or you might not want it there. right? But it's nice to know that there's one other option in terms of how you're building interfaces and how you're building the control for the things that you're assembling. All right, nice work, everybody. Don't forget to save your work. And I can't wait to see you in class.